Hello students and welcome to the second online lecture. My name is Mr. Schlegel and I am the Lancer Science Teacher and today I am going to talk with you about the cell in its environment. Last section we talked a bunch about the cell and what's inside the cell and how the cell protects itself and today we're going to talk about a very important aspect of the cell that deals with material movement. So things getting in and out of the cell, like water and oxygen and CO2 and food and waste products. Very important in the life of a cell, how they're able to do their job. So we're gonna start with a little visual here. And the question is, do you like riding your bike? I am pretty avid of a bike rider. And you can see in the picture there, a bike that I would really enjoy having. Some of you may or may not enjoy it, but we want to keep this visual in mind as we talk about material movement. Riding uphill is always a lot of work, not as much fun, and that's why I put a frowny face there. Once you get to the top of the hill and it's time to ride downhill, then it's fun. You just sit back, relax, and there you go. You don't really have to pedal. You just have to steer and keep going straight down the hill. So keep that visual in mind as we talk through this presentation on material movement. Uphill takes a lot of energy. You've got to pedal hard. Downhill, not so much. This represents passive and active transport, the two types of material movement that we're going to be covering in this online lecture. The first one is passive transport, and that requires no energy from the cell. Just like the guy sitting on the couch right here, he is not using much energy. So passive transport takes no energy. So this would be like riding your bike down the hill. No cell energy is used. The second type of transport that we'll be talking about is active transport. And this one uses energy. If you just look at the two words, active and passive, it's pretty easy to tell which one should be using energy. The active transport would be like you riding your bike up the hill. In this case, the cell must use its energy to move materials. You can see this would be an example, a lady running or walking, basketball, football, any sort of exercise active takes your energy. You have to try a little harder than sitting on the couch eating potato chips or playing video games on your Xbox or PS3 or 4 or on your computer. So you can kind of see the difference riding downhill compared to riding your bike uphill. There are three types of passive transport that we're going to talk about today. The first one is called diffusion. And this is the process by which molecules move from an area of high concentration to an area of lower concentration. As you can see, it goes from high to low. We're riding your bike from the top of the hill to the bottom of the hill. Nice and easy. This is a natural movement. Things want to go from where there's more to where there's less. Just like it says here, it goes from where there's lots to where there's little. Some examples would be an air freshener. You spray it and eventually it spreads through the whole room. Cookies in the oven downstairs that you smell up in your bedroom. Kool-Aid and food coloring that you might put in water and watch it spread. Body odor, fart smell, heaters, air conditioners, and so many more. They all move from where there's lots to where there's little. And this is called diffusion. Now, this can happen just in the air. It can happen with liquids, solids, gases. With the cell, things may move in and out of the cell depending where there's more of them. If you look in the diagram below, diffusion, where there's a lot of molecules, a lot of molecules in this side of the water, over time, evens out. So it will keep moving until it's even. If more get over here, then some will move back. That's how diffusion works. It, it goes from where there's more to where there's less. The second type of passive transport is called facilitated diffusion. Now this is just like diffusion, 
except it's for larger molecules. Diffusion of larger molecules using a protein channel in the cell membrane. Here's a picture of this happening. The green thing here is your protein channel. The blue are your larger molecules that can't move through the cell membrane without a little gateway. An example of a large molecule is glucose, and that's the food molecule used by plants and animals. It's a little bigger, so it can't fit through these circles on the edge of the membrane. It's got to go through the protein channel. Still goes from where there's more high concentration to low concentration. So like riding your bike from the top of the hill, this takes no energy. It just takes a gateway. Before we talk about the third type of passive transport, we need to talk about the word selectively permeable. Sometimes you might heard it, hear it referred to as semi-permeable. What that means is some substances can cross the membrane while others cannot. Just like this guy standing in front of a concert, some people are allowed to go backstage, some are not. And that is what your cell membrane does in your cell. It is selectively permeable. Some things it lets pass, some it does not. The third type of passive transport is osmosis. Osmosis still is passive, so it's still from high to low, the top of the hill to the bottom, but this is different because it's the diffusion of water molecules across a selectively permeable membrane. Some examples of osmosis would be a strainer, a Brita water filter, a coffee filter. These could all be examples. You could think of a lot more. But as we look at these two beakers down here in the bottom, we see there's a selectively permeable membrane going down the middle. These red dashes here, you can picture any type of membrane there you like. And we will show some examples in class of this as well. But you can see there's a whole lot of molecules over here, meaning there's less water. Over here, there's less molecules, means there's more water, the pink stuff. So over time, the water wants to move to where there's less water. So it goes from the left over to the right. And then once it moves, the concentration of how much water there is for molecules is the same. How much water there is to molecules is the same on both sides. So the water moves in osmosis. In diffusion, it's other particles and molecules moving. In osmosis, it's water. That is your giveaway word to know we're talking about osmosis, is if it's talking about water. The cell and osmosis. Does the cell always want more water? Now, all of us know that cells need water to live and to function and do their job what they're supposed to. However, too much water can cause an animal cell to swell up, and if there's gets too bad, eventually burst and die. So you do not always want more water. A cell membrane, as you look around the outsides of these red blood cells, the cell membrane is permeable to water. So water can go in and out. But if we get too much water on the inside, then more water will simply move to the outside. If you have too much water in your red blood cells, it'll move out into your bloodstream, when your blood goes through the kidneys, you will then pee it out. Any excess water you get rid of in the bathroom. So our cells do not always want more water. They need just the right amount. The second type of transport, material movement, is called active transport. And this would be the opposite. Now you are riding your bike from the bottom of the hill up to the top. You have to use energy here. So this is the movement of materials across the cell membrane using energy from the cell. It goes from where there's not very much, low concentration, to high concentration, where there is a lot more. And you can see in the picture here, it goes from where there's not very many to where there's a lot. 
This is not natural. It takes energy. When you're riding your bike, gravity naturally pulls you down a hill. At the same time, gravity naturally pulls you as you're trying to ride up the hill. So it takes energy to do this. It takes the cell's energy in order to do active transport. Words to look for to alert you as this is active transport would be something being pumped, forced, pulled, or using the cell's energy. Those are kind of your words to look for to know it's active transport. There are two types of active transport that we are mainly going to discuss. One is endocytosis, as you see here. The other is exocytosis. I wanted to show you this little video clip to show you what endocytosis looks like in a cell. I've actually got two for endocytosis, one for exocytosis. So please take a watch. It's about a 30 second clip. Cells also use energy to transfer materials in bulk, but this time by forming membranous sacs that hold their contents under wraps. In a process the cell membrane is flexible, part of the surface membrane encloses the so it bends in, a sac which brings the contents into the and cell then it's material. in the cell. In the opposite process, called exocytosis, the sac moves through the cytoplasm to the membrane uses with it, then releases the contents. So remember, this is to take in or remove even larger particles, so that are not highly concentrated. So even bigger ones than we'd use facilitated diffusion. The next video is endocytosis. This video is endocytosis also showing an amoeba, which is a single cell organism. This is the way an amoeba eats through endocytosis. So it moves material into its body to eat. So take a watch of the amoeba eating through endocytosis. And you kind of have to watch closely. Our little food particle is right here and it's about to get taken in by endocytosis. See the cell membrane bends in and eventually closes in around. It's only now that the prey animal realizes that something has gone horribly, horribly wrong and tries to start swimming out, but it is trapped. From there it will be digested and used for food in that amoeba. Pretty cool. And then the last part is exocytosis. So this is another single celled organism. Exocytosis is generally used to give out waste products, so to get wastes out of the cell that are no longer needed and now are just getting in the way. So take a watch how exocytosis happens. Obviously we can't read that language. I don't know what it says. You can see the waste particles being removed from the cell in the bottom left hand corner here. And I think there's a couple more that are going to go. Yeah, the cell membrane opens up, allows it to go out, and then reseals itself again. And that's exocytosis. So that brings us to the end of the second online lecture, Material Movement and the Cell. <laughs> Things to remember is there are three types of passive transport that don't use energy, diffusion, facilitated diffusion, and osmosis. And then we talked about two different types of active transport, endocytosis, taking something in to the cell, and exocytosis the things exiting the cell. 
Thank you all for watching. I hope you learned something.